Hey guys, welcome back to the lovely Brampton Golf Club. Yes. Delighted to be outside. It's great to be outside. I know, I know. We uh, obviously would have loved to have done more outdoor filming, as we always say, but it always seems like it's against us. <laughs> you know, this year just the courses yeah. have been a little bit more uh, strict on on sort of guest play and things like that. And rightly busy, so. Right? And and busy. busy. Yep, yeah. absolutely. So yeah. we did uh, think that we would get a little opportunity today, and it worked out. So this is perfect. So here we are. So while we're outdoors, obviously there's a lot of things we always talk about. We want to test outdoors, ball uh, specific things, mm. wedge specific things. We're going to yes. focus on that today. So the wedge specific outdoor testing we did a couple years ago. Yeah. I remember it focusing on the full swing. Yeah. Today we're going to do that kind of in two little pieces in this video. We're going to do the full swing, but then we're going to go over the short game area. Yeah. And really that's where those grinds and bounces come into play yeah, more. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's where in most companies that's where the options lie. Yeah. Um, like we'll show you once we go into our process and how we do it, you know, you'll see for Matt really there's there might be only really one or two bounce options, yes. you know, one sole grind option. Um, but we want to talk about how that's not that shouldn't always limit you as well. Um, so we'll take it into our process a little bit, our thought process, some of the questions. I'm sure people wonder why is there an M grind 58 and there's not an M grind 50? Why exactly. is that? Like I've got my 50 degree wedge here and it, there is just the one. Yeah. I mean, it's got a little bit of sole design, but it's pretty much like what you'd seen in an iron. Absolutely. Safe to say. Start of any wedge fit, the first thing we do is we, we look at the iron set. Mm, okay. We look at what your pitching wedge is and does. And then we start to make a plan as to what we do about that gap wedge. Is it an extension of that, that set? Mm -hmm. Do you need it for that? Do you need the forgiveness? Or are you looking for those other attributes a specialist wedge has, such as a specific sole design, okay. such as the groove technology, such as milling on the face, right. those types of things. And you would ask me as the customer whether I would chip with this, which yeah. I would say yes, I do chip with the 50 a little bit. Yes. Um, and then we'd start to work on what yardage do I want to fly and stuff like that. Exactly that, exactly. So we're going to start right there. We're going to hit your pitching wedge, your uh, T146, uh, hit some full shots, get your number, start to gap the distances, because that's right. important too. So of course. even before we get to the short game, we will hit some gap wedges, sand wedges, lob wedges, get a little feel for the lofts, and mm. then we can we can filter down, you know, right. from the, the lofts we're going to use, which sole design in that loft we're going to use. Perfect. Beautiful. That's a good strike. It's a lovely strike. Beautiful. Fly nicely. Okay, good. Um, 10,000 spin in the wedge, 24 launch, 112 ball speed, all good. Mm. So really just now we're starting to go, okay, what do we need to do to keep uh, that, that kind of consistency? So for different players, obviously, you know, you're still, you're going to be 130 yards out from the flag a bunch yeah, of times. It does, it does come up a lot. So we, we do have to be mindful of what club we give you for that and, and, you know, not make it too much of a specialist wedge just yet. Yes. So got to make sure you still have that distance, uh, the ability to hit that distance at the minute. Right. Um, Would so that be the next yardage gap you look at about 130? 130, based yeah. on this, 146 to 130, 131 would be, would be really, really nice. Perfect. Okay, so I'm going to grab you the 50. Um, so let's let's get a few uh, few full ones with this one. Okay. Interesting to see if we, we do get some lower flighted ones, just because the grooves are so fresh. For sure. One thing we, we do see is when uh, when brand new wedges, we get brand new wedges, sometimes it can be hard to hit your distances for yes. a little while. I noticed that when I got my new Mizunos. Yeah. I adjusted to it, but for sure, yeah. the first couple shots you hit, you're like, whoa. Got to be a little mindful spinning. of that. Yeah. Okay. So this is a 10 degree bounce 50. Okay. Good guess. 132. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> okay, that last one was really nice as well. 132, 132. Nice. Yeah, so that's got more spin and a little yep. more launch because yep. I didn't lean on it. Looks like it's doing the right job, isn't it? It's pretty much bang on. This is great. 13 yards, uh, 13 yards less, so we're, we're right where we need to be for you. Spin, launch and spin are really consistent. Yeah. You know, consistency, we always talk about the standard deviation, stuff like that. 
it really is what you're looking for. You're yeah. just looking for the same thing to, to repeat and that way you can then predict what's about to happen. Especially with your wedge game, that's yeah. where you want to be hitting it to 10 feet and stuff. Definitely. Um, on the bounce, Yep. what would you look for? I know there are some bounce options, with, yeah. generally with gap wedges, within a few degrees. You're really looking at between 8, 10, 12. So if I, let's say, I know this is right in the middle, but let's yeah. say I was using the 8. If I was kind of digging in a little bit, if my divots were deep, yeah. would you look to the 12 as kind of the... Sure, absolutely. Yeah, sort you, of strike pattern stuff? You definitely could. If if we were see that we had a like little kind of high strike pattern, yes. we wanted to lower it slightly, just add a little bit more bounce. Gotcha, and ground conditions would be a factor. Like mid, I think is perfect for us because yeah. we're going to play firm and soft golf we are. courses. Like this is pretty, Pretty reasonably firm here it is today. Reasonably firm. No but problem with that. If it rains a bit, you'll want. Yeah. So the mid bounces, I think, would be what I would choose. I think that's generally what I usually. That's just usually. about ideal. Table club data. So you're five degrees down um, with your gap wedge. You are more like four and a half with your pitching wedge. Right. So you're not steeper. overly steep. Right. Anything probably six and above, six, seven, eight degrees down is steep. steep. You're going to see some good divots. Anywhere kind of. You know, three to five is, is kind of in the middle. Anything, you know, sh shallower than three is right. really pretty shallow. That's someone who's a sweeper. Definitely. Nothing doesn't take a divot. That's it. Gotcha. Exactly. So generally those people will need to go a little bit stronger loft because they are adding a bit more dynamic loft, that's that type of thing. So our next stop in terms of uh, distance for you is going to be today one, it's going to be right around 118 to 120. 180. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Let's do that. So we've selected you the 5412. Nice. Um, you know, again, I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, not 56 for you, because yeah. you are going to still hit quite a lot of full shots. So I'm thinking 54 or 55. Yeah, you could always weaken this, right? Yeah, so that's 5412. I'm also looking at the 5410, making it maybe 5511. Great idea. That might be right in the wheelhouse for you as well. Absolutely. Okay. Lovely. Really nice control of that. Two. Love those two, identical. Yeah. So guys, you'll see in between shots, Matty Boy's doing a crucial thing, cleaning the face, making sure he's still achieving maximum friction from yep. uh, from between club and ball. It, it's essential. The last thing you have to get is a 9,000 spin rate and the ball all of a sudden goes six yards further and then you go, oh, that's the wrong wedge. Completely screw up your fit. Completely. Yeah. So your spin rate right now, First one was 12,020, second one 12,005, last one 12,090. Wow. I love that. That's fantastic. Um, launch angles within one degree every single time. Ball speed really isn't very. That last one was a little bit quicker. I Sounded just, like a great contact. Yeah, I think I just really smoked that It was really one. good. But that's and fine. to be fair, though, only went two yards further than your average. If right. you're upset with two yards, yeah, which is, you know. It's a high end problem, isn't it? A couple it? feet, yeah. You're yeah. about 400 RPMs less. Interesting. Went three yards longer. Huh. It was only 11 yards shorter than the gap wedge. The other one was 14. We're looking for about, about you know, 14, 15 yard yeah. gaps for you. Uh, be ideal. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely That's a little pretty, bit of a difference. Pretty interesting to go two degrees of bounce and one club is really spot on and one's just not quite there. Yeah. Yeah. So I think fairly, fairly unanimously, we would say 54, 12, a little bit more bounce. Yeah. Now, our decision probably is, do we stick with that is when we get over there, because that is your sand wedge club. That's going to be a lot of longer bunker shots. Long bunker and shots and A lot of straight pitch. up basic pitch shots. Yeah, yeah. I had okay. quite a few low ones with that too. Good, good. Okay, we're, we're going to leave the, the full swing part at, at this. Yeah, at this the 60's bit. not as relevant for that. So. 60, yeah, we're not really thinking it's more just uh, for the specialty shots around the green, yes. and you might have to play the odd full shot with it, but and um, we'll keep that in mind. But now we've baselined your delivery all that sort of thing. We'll, we'll head over and uh, you know we'll see what what works with the short stuff. Perfect. Sounds okay. good. Okay, guys, um, we're over at the, the short game area. We've mm. got the green behind us. A couple of bunkers, which is great. This is how we would rather you know do these types of shots. We do want to know how the green receives the golf ball, how Definitely. it takes it, how it spins, hitting different little shots into back pins and different sort of things like that. So uh, we, we had an eye-opening experience. We went to TPI. Uh, to the Tigers facility that, yeah. and, and we saw the, the facilities they've got which are really nothing comes close to anywhere I, that I've ever seen so right. um, you know, nice to be able to have the option to shoot at different pins and 
and test the different parts of your short game that you're going to need, Matty. And this is where you'll expose really the grind differences, the bounce differences yeah, in these higher lofted wedges. This is really where yes. those demands pop Absolutely. up. Absolutely, definitely. So we're we're looking for now for versatility. We're looking for um, shots that you can hit from here, the bunker. Mm. One thing people don't realize is that more people play shots from the rough with their wedges than the fairway with their wedges. That's a good point. So we are going to test a few shots, making sure that you're comfortable uh, in, in the rough as nice. well. Good we idea. we got to make sure this is a well-rounded recommendation for you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Let's take a little uh, look at the first few. So we're 54 going... 54 54-12. 54-12 is where we left off. Yep. You've got a 58-yard pin. So this is... I would definitely start to hit partial wedges depending on what trajectory I need with this lofted club, and then obviously Good. the higher lofted club. Okay. okay. Beautiful. A little long, really but good. Nice. Better distance. Beautiful. So, nice. I've talked a little bit about this in the past, how I like a wedge shot to, to kind of hit the green and just release like a putt. Yeah. That's exactly what that done. Definitely. That had enough spin, but it didn't come to a screaming halt. You don't need it to. No, you know, why would you, you? Really slightly to a back flag. You had green to work with, this Definitely. is the right club to use. Okay, a uh, couple more. It was nice, 5,800 spin, 33 launch. All good with uh, with that. And we want to see how we can move that around a little bit as we change grinds. Yes, with different grinds, okay. Also very good. It's definitely got plenty of grab, that's for sure. Tons of grab. Late grab. A little bit lower there, 31, and uh, spin was up at 73. Felt like I clipped that a little bit yeah. nicer. They feel a little thin, if I'm honest. Yep, okay. Okay, different. I hit it a bit too hard. I definitely like the look of that okay. flight. That was better, eh? Yes. A little downwind. I should probably adjust for that. That's nice. I like that a lot. That looked really, really soft. Um, Different, different kind of landing characteristics on mm -hmm. that. Ooh. Some more jazz with us, that's for sure. This is great, yeah. Um, so you've got kind of two things working for you here, and this is a really good flag to expose it because it's, it's quite far back there. and It's one of those sucker pins that you go for and it doesn't grab and you end up with the rough and you've got actually a really short-sided, horrible yeah. little chip shot trying to get up and down. Right. Yeah. So you have a one and a half degree steeper land angle and you have 1200 RPMs more in spin. Really? Yeah. Gotcha. That's by going a little bit more loft. A little bit more loft and and, uh, and into a grind. I mean, they're both technically oh, a similar bounce. This is two less. Two less bounce, um, yeah. So trying to get a little bit more a little bit less bounce, a little bit more kind of turf interaction, trying to get a little bit more down and into it. It feels like that. Your, your strikes before were just too too low in the blade. They were, yes. you know, on the bottom groove. They so, felt thin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we need to go uh, into that. So interesting over there, we, we definitely preferred the 54-12 over the 10, but in here we prefer the 10. Yes. So we have a, you know, a decision to make in, on, on that front. Kind of seems like maybe bending something to get a 55-11 might have been a find, good idea. Find something, yeah, and we, yeah, we maybe, we, we talked about that, so. Um, okay, I'm gonna give you- Different grind? Yeah, different, different one. Okay, I won't look. Yeah, there's something here, that's for sure. Just feels very uh, crisp. I think as a fitter, what's important is um, you're really using all your, your senses here, right? So mm -hmm. I'm looking at that face. It's the highest you've hit that in the face by quite a distance. I saw some of the other ones, they were about two grooves lower than that. Definitely. Actually slightly on the toe as well. Yeah. Um, so this has moved some more center side. Moved more centered and, and certainly into the right, in the right window. Huh. Dancing. 
So what are you getting from uh, from these strikes? I think you, you captured it really well. They're less low and mm -hmm. they're less toe side. Um, I also feel like I'm probably a little bit easier just kind of catching it off the turf. Okay. I think the turf is, I'm taking a little divot, which is nice, yep. but I don't feel like it's sticking in there. It's kind okay. of coming out nicely. I don't know. Yeah, I would say, Matty, like, there's good with this, but there's also, we're teetering the edge of, of it being too low in bounds. Because it's eight? Yeah. Yeah, so you can pick really nice ones, get the strike higher, but you can also chunk one like a, I just a did. A little and... bit of, you've lost your protection. Yeah, that I, little I insurance that. policy is, is kind of gone. That, uh, that's pretty much enough to go high bounce was a bit thin, <laughs> low bounce was a bit heavy. Yeah. Mid bounce was pretty good. So a 5610 uh, was, was right on it the was money. Was right on the money. Maybe thinking 55 11. 11, yeah, yeah. Um, if we go sort of 54 10 and, and make it one, uh, one week. Okay. All right. So okay. made our way a little bit uh, further up the hole, closer to the green. We have um, just over 30 yards in now. Right. Short sided you. Okay, we've kept the, the rough, the bunker between you and the flag. A shot amateur golfers just dread. This is when you need the highest lofted club, right? This is you need the you need the highest lofted club and, and you perhaps start to need you know need some bounce, you know, at, at True. this point. So, Especially on a lie like this, you definitely yeah, want bounce. Absolutely. Um, you know, maybe if you were over there and it was a little bit more sort of or back where we were just hitting those last, it was a bit a bit more bare. It was sandy. Yeah. yeah. This is lush. A little more lush for sure. Okay. That's where you need the versatility to your bag. Interesting. Came out lovely. Yeah, nicely played also. Me too. You can see the Rifliski influence on you right now. <laughs> you can see know. the uh, little, little entry a little behind the ball. Bruising, yeah. I'm, yep. not, I'm not fussed about it, that's for sure. Well, you're using a lot of land angle here, Matty. That was 49 degrees that's coming was in. Was it? Huh? Yeah. So it's going to stop pretty... It will. Quickly. Now, we are uphill, so we are shallowing out that land angle slightly. True. But um, it's still it's still stopping really nice yeah, and quickly. Yeah, I mean, considering the wind is going that way and everything, yeah. it's the right shot. Okay. Okay. Good. Like that one. Grabbed a bit more. Yep. Different. Huh. Oh, oh. Leopard. I mean, it's massively different. There's something going on with way more spin every time you massively get it. Massively different. Yeah. Launch came down five degrees, spin went up 2,000 off the last one. Wow. The average of the last one. It kind of felt like they were slipping off the top toe side of the face a bit. Yeah, these are much better, aren't they? Really good. They feel proper. Well, you went from kind of dipping in and out, so you'd won at 5,000 the last one. The last three have been 56, 54, 5,800. It's pretty consistent. Massively for different, shot, yeah. yeah. And it's just the same. Launch is now under 40, so mm. it tells the friction is, is much, much more uh, aggressive. The low bounce is yeah. very different, isn't very it? Very different. First wow. one came out so much lower, so much more sort of, you know, bite yeah. to it. So if you do get short-sided, you've got, you've got a shot up your sleeve. For everything else, you've got your 50, 55. Um, and then for this this situation, you know, you've got a little get out of jail card. It's quite interesting. So picking the ball and spinning it off of a tight lie with the low bounce makes sense that that's a bit easier. Yep. Um, why do you think the, the, I guess the D grind was less of the factor? Because this is sort of, what is this? Like a C grind sort of thing. Yeah, very much, very much heel toe relief with a little bit of trail edge on there. But yeah. I think it just comes down to, again, moving that strike around. 
So then maybe having the higher bounce for the mid wedge, like you said, Definitely. I can still, find, say I have like a fluffy lie in the yeah. rough, I can use it for that. Absolutely. But the low bounce option is good for a ton of situations too. I think that's that's the versatility. Everyone needs to try and get into their game. So you've got a, a shot for every situation. Um, you know, for you, the sand wedge wouldn't, wouldn't be great here. It'd probably roll out a little bit too much. Correct. Uh, you need that little, um, that little checker in your bag. Right. Okay, so at this point, we, we don't bring the launch monitor over for this stuff. Different kind yeah. of set of circumstances. We're not, we're not really worried about what it does in here. So we're, we're going to look at it different shots. We maybe want to tap a couple yeah, down, down, set a couple crap. up. You know, look at how we, where you strike it, where the CG is in that golf club. Mm -hmm. A big movement in wedge design has been to move the CG a little bit higher. Right. To have a little bit more mass up there. So if you do get a bit of a fluffy lie, it doesn't just hit that dead spot. I and mean, you've got yeah, you know, a lot more mass no, up there. No ball speed. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start with, this is the same low bounce that we just did over there. Okay. Yeah, pretty nicely played. Okay. Did it feel a little bit easier? Yeah, it felt like the ball came out with a little more so, pop. The the more loft we have, the shallower the face sits. Yes. The more likely we are to hit it up the head, especially if we're in fluffy stuff like this. Right. So I always try and avoid the most lofted club in this scenario. I'd unless probably, you have to have unless it. You, unless you're kind of really lofting something up. But, you know, really if you hit the fringe or we hit the front and roll on, it doesn't really matter. No. So um, that, that would be something where I think you'd benefit from just a little bit more release, a little more ball speed uh, out of this lie. So we got that from the less loft, but also more bounce, right? Yeah. Kept it from sinking in the turf exactly. as well. Exactly. Yeah, you're guaranteed you're going to get it to the hole with exactly. that. Exactly. Differently. Yeah, and I think that's the one thing, the one mistake people make more often from these types of lies is they just don't get it there. Okay, my man, uh, we brought both of your sand clubs over, um, sand wedge, lob wedge. We're going to start with, with this one. We're going yeah. to start with your 56, 10. You've got a little uphill lie here. Um, let's see how they came out. Generally, I remember you telling me that if you practice or play even with your mid yeah. loft wedge, you're likely to be way better off. It's one of the things I can't wait for you to hit a couple with this in a yeah. second after feel you it. hit these. You hit some nice soft ones with this, and all of a sudden you hit these, and you'll literally feel like a tour pro. <laughs> okay, I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would say after another couple, you start to kind of react to the flights. You you're you force the technique like you said. Yes. So the next couple will come out soft or higher, and then we'll switch. Better. Yep. Really nice. Like that. That's a really good quality bunker shot. Yeah, that feels nice. So this is Ian's sneaky training program, eh, for the bunker? <laughs> it, it, I really like the idea of it, though. All right. Yeah, a little bit more uh, loft, so you can be a bit more aggressive. <laughs> That's so cool, eh? This comes out really soft. Because I'm not, I'm not great at hitting a high bunker shot, yeah. to be honest. So that one looked very good to me. Like it was very high relative to how far it went. And look where, where it stopped. I mean, it's got to stop 10 feet earlier. Easily, yeah. Yeah, it's a different, just entirely different. It's quality. It's got some spin on it. It's checking, it's stopping. Grab you a couple more. You can really start to get aggressive with that. I mean, that was, that was the thump. Yeah, yep. all good players talk you about. Can hear so, that a bit. Yeah, really, uh, really good. This is a shockingly good bunker club. I would never have thought that this would be all that playable in the bunker. Yep. And we've got kind of fairly firm very bunkers firm. here, so you, you know, I, I, it does uh, cater to a little bit of a lower bounce as well. Helps in that sense, yeah. true. It's just almost I have to get used to how hard I can I swing now. That's it. You can like hear how ball's... aggressive you are with yeah, it. Yeah, it's really stopping so fast that I, I don't. I always feel like I'm kind of going, 
uh, like yeah. don't hit it too far with the bunker shot. Mm -hmm. This really lets you just kind of zip it out of there. Zip it out of there. You've got all the all the loft. You've got the bounce that's kind of working uh, working for you. That's the sign that you have the right tool. Nice, well rounded yeah. uh, set makeup. So this was really cool. Yeah, I liked how we kind of went from the range the fifty. Would you say it was probably the easier one to fit because it was mostly mostly a loft and distance control thing? Definitely. Fewer options, obviously, as well, but, you know, that's it's, it's, we're just trying to hit a number. Yeah. Trying to hit a number. Make sure we and get consistency. consistency. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. Um, then we, we take half of, of our choice on the range with the 50, which will probably turn out for you, in this case, be 55, 55 we're thinking. 55, 11 would be perfect. That would be nice. Yeah. So we take half of our decision from there and we bring it over and we make the other half here just yes. to see what we need it to do. And then when we start getting into these little specialty areas, the bunker, the rough, short-sided, all that sort of stuff, then you know we start to figure out what's what do we need with our trouble club, which is generally the, the 60. This is definitely like a nice little get out of jail club. It really is. I loved seeing that it wasn't the best in the rough, which yeah. which made sense. Yeah. The mid bounce was really nice to keep the, I mean, you need dig in there, but you can do dig with technique. Yeah. Ultimately, this didn't have enough bounce, I guess, for some of those mm -hmm. lies, but it was perfect from that tight lie. That little there. spinner that you needed. And it, the trajectory of that was so different. Mm -hmm. Like I thought I was going to try to pop it up in the air and stop it. Yeah. But with that club, it just came out low and just spun. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed this. This is probably the most in-depth wedge fit philosophy video that uh, that we've done. I agree. Uh, in, in all the different sort of areas where you're going to hit your wedges. Um, please think about trying to do you know your wedge fit like this if you can, if that's available to if you. If it's even possible, yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. And try lots of different bounces, grinds, be open to that sort of thing. Obviously, shaft we know matters not so much because it you know it's a spinner shaft or this and that mm. you know weight and feel all those sorts of things shafts that you're not really swinging full speed you want to try and you know make sure they're not overly stiff I agree uh, those those types of things these have all had some sort of s200 ish exactly club this spinner tour yeah. issue is really nice brand from new Cleveland. spinner tour issue yeah 128 grams is a, is a really nice option from yeah. them yeah i think zipcore and uh, sm8s are one to watch for the year two of the love, best love both of those two a lot. of the best okay right. guys thanks so much for watching hope you enjoyed this today and we'll see you again soon